We'll be starting with a quote that has already been set up and approved from Salesforce. Switching over to our related list, we have a number of quote lines we've already configured. And now that my quote is ready, I'll be creating a quote document using Octave. In this workflow, we'll be generating, preparing and editing, sending, redlining, and signing this quote document with Octave. A few things to point out on the quote before we get started. We have an Octave document status field we'll be using to kick off opportunity and quote stage updates based on document activity. And further down, there is a print options section which will control some of the look and feel of that document using show hide logic on those fields. To start my process, I'll click create document. I'm now presented with my web view of the document. In the center, I see my HTML content area, which I can edit on the fly, or make more advanced edits using the editor toolbar. On the left side of my document, I see my table of contents broken out into sections and pages. And on the right side, I have a dashboard of panels to walk me through the next steps of the process. In addition to on-the-fly changes, I can also access my asset library to bring in images, embed files, pre-built content, or text snippets and clauses that I can drag into my content as well. Again on my content page, I see variables pulling in represented as highlighted text here. On my next page, quote details, I see a template of a table built out and when I click my preview toggle, I'll be able to see it rendered grouped by each product group with the quote lines within each group. On my next page, terms and conditions, I see the dashed box there and when I click preview on this page, I see that it disappears. This is something my admin would have set up on the template for this document. And in the gear icon that shows up on that dashed box, I can see the modal that the admin would use to set up show hide logic for when this particular paragraph should show or hide. This same conditional statement modal is available on pages and sections, giving you quite a few options to control when certain terms, pages, or pieces of content should be showing or hiding, allowing you to many times consolidate the templates used in your account. Next, now that I have my document ready, I'll click Publish Now. This shows the document now as the recipient will view it, and my Next Steps panel walks me through my next action of adding people. Here, I'll add Salesforce contacts, and instead of just the collaborator or viewer, I'll edit that contact and make that recipient a signer and set them as signer one. In this case, we just have one signer. Again, I'm guided to send the email using Octave, include all my recipients, and I'll leave the email uh, as the default template. Clicking send will now deliver that email from the document owner via Octave. Switching tabs, I'm now viewing Gavin's inbox, my recipient, where I can see the branded email that Octave delivers. I'll click view document. Clicking that link in the email automatically recognizes me as Gavin, that recipient. And I can look at each page of the document, see the same view that my document owner previewed earlier, and scroll through my terms and conditions. As I'm doing this, the document owner is also being notified via email, text, or chatter, depending on that user's notification settings. In this example, we'll walk through the redlining process. This is also a button that could have been removed by the admin or document owner, skipping straight to signing. In this case, we'll go into the redlining process by clicking redline. And on this terms and conditions page, I'll first add in my own term here. I also have some more advanced editing options available across that top toolbar. Next, I'll delete out a paragraph, and a little further down, I'll change that 50% down to a 75% by selecting and typing over. 
Now that I've made these simple changes, I'll click Submit for Approval. I see the changes that I've requested on the right panel where I can keep tabs on them. Switching over to my view as the document owner, I see in the Versions tab that a change request is pending. And here, I can click on each of those changes to jump to them in the document. I can address them directly in line in the content, or I can address them on the right panel. In this case, I'll reject the paragraph being deleted and also that change to 75%. Once I've either accepted or rejected all of the changes, I'll click Submit as New Version. And since I'm okay with them signing off on this document, I'll make the version signable. Flipping back over to my tab as the recipient, as Gavin, if I'm viewing it real time, I'll be notified that there's a change and prompted to reload the document. Otherwise, I'll receive an email notification from Octave automatically with a link to that document. That link will always show the most recent version of the document, so I'm always seeing the up-to-date content. Here I can see that new content, the term that was added, the paragraph and percentage that are still there. I can go through this process as many times as I'd like, but after I compare it to the previous version here by clicking that drop down, I'll continue on to signing. You can see that version comparison allows me to see the changes that were requested and how each one was addressed. Now that I'm ready to sign, I'll flip back to that current version and move on to the signing process. Octave is preparing the DocuSign envelope behind the scenes here via the Octave DocuSign integration. While everything was changing and the editing was changing the content in Octave, now that the content is finalized, Octave creates the PDF for DocuSign eSignature. As the recipient, I'm presented with the DocuSign eSignature screen directly in line with my viewing workflow there, and I can see the most up-to-date information, whether it was internal editing by the document owner, or further down, where we have some of the red lines that were made with the recipient. Jumping down to the last page, I'm using some custom fields or custom tags in DocuSign to collect some additional information from the recipient and sign. Once my document's accepted, both parties will receive email notification of that acceptance, along with a link to download that signed PDF for their own records. Back on the document as the document owner, I can see the document status has been updated, and when I click back to my quote, I'll refresh the screen, and I can see that both Octave document status and quote status have been updated to accept it. I can also see on my related list Octave documents that I've created on this quote. I can access them quickly here and see some basic stats from that related list. Again, we've set up our quote with quote lines, configured different fields on the quote, both as merge fields and fields to control show hide logic of certain pages or clauses in our Octave document, sent the document after editing using Octave, went through a redlining process with my recipient, and then signed off on that document with Octave's DocuSign integration. In the end, we were brought back to our quote with both opportunity and quote stages updated to reflect the actions that have taken place on that document.